In my structure engineering made simple series, today I talk about anchor design. This is part one of a two part series and focuses on anchors embedded in concrete. Please take a moment and read the disclaimer at the bottom of this page before we continue. Anchors are used in the connection of a structural member to concrete or masonry. Common applications include anchors attaching a column-based plate to the foundation, shelf angles to the masonry wall or concrete structural members, brackets to masonry walls or concrete providing support for cables, rods, and other tension structural members. Proper design of anchors requires selecting the anchor cross-section diameter, embedment length, and the spacing between anchors following design provisions of the American Concrete Institute, ACI. This lecture focuses on connection of anchors to reinforce concrete structural systems. For anchor design in masonry, please see lecture 12 of my series on a structural engineering made simple. These are the references used in the preparation of this video. Anchor forces. Critical forces transmitted to an anchor are an axial tensile force and a shear force. These forces are computed through detailed structural analyses based on the type of application. For example, in attaching a shelf angle to a concrete structural member, the tension and shear in the anchor can easily be obtained based on the weight W using the equations of equilibrium. As shown in this figure, the forces are tension in anchor and shear. The tension is balanced by a compression from concrete. The applied moment M can be taken approximately as W times E. This moment is balanced by a tension force in anchor and a compression as we said before. A more accurate estimate of the moment M is done when the weight of the outstanding leg of the angle is also considered. In this case, M would be equal to W times E plus QA SA over 2. QA is weight of one half of the angle per unit length. S is the spacing between the anchors and A is the length of the outstanding leg of the angle. For simplicity and conservatively, M can be taken as W plus QA S times E. In any case, the tension force in the anchor TA is M divided by Y, where Y is the lever arm as shown in the figure Therefore, the tension force would be WE plus QA SA over 2 divided by Y, or conservatively as W plus QA S times E divided by Y. And the shear is W plus 2 QA times S. Again, as we said before, S is the anchor spacing. QA is one half of weight of the angle per foot. A is the length of the outstanding leg of the angle. The dimension of Y is obtained from the AIAC manual, where it is listed for different size angles. The main parameters used for the design of anchors are the embedment length HEF and the anchor diameter DA. This is the outside diameter of the anchor or the shaft diameter in headed anchors and studs. There are two types of anchors, conventional types made up of threaded or hooked bars and commercial anchors, which are patented and are distributed by various manufacturers, such as Hilti and Strong Tie. Commercial anchors are becoming more popular because of services provided by the manufacturers in the form of application software and consultation by experts. Regardless of the type used, we must understand the modes of failure of the anchor and compute its resistance accordingly. Strength computation. 
Chapter 17 of ACI 2014 covers the design requirements for anchors under tension, shear, or a combination of these two kinds of forces. The materials presented herein outline the strength design method. Therefore, all applied loads will need to consider appropriate load factors and a combination of different kinds of loads as stipulated in Section 5.3 of ACI 2014. The ACI provisions apply to casting post-installed expansion such as torque control and displacement control, undercut and adhesive anchors. Let's understand these different types of anchors. The upper figure shows several commercial anchors. These are examples of expansion post-installed anchors. A hole is drilled, area cleaned, and anchor is installed. The lower figure shows a series of conventional anchors. Notice that they are either headed anchors or hooked anchors. The embedment length HEF is shown in both types. ACI 2014 permits using the strength design of anchors based either on computation using design models that satisfy the requirements of 17.3.2 or on test evaluation using the 5% fractile of applicable test results. The 5% fractile level indicates that for 95% of tests performed, the actual anchor capacity would be greater than that predicted by the model value Rn. The model value Rn is also called the nominal resistance value. In this figure, a probability density function for the resistance R is shown. Please notice that the mean value is Rm and the model value or nominal value is Rn, which corresponds to 0.05 probability. Therefore, Rn is equal to Rm minus 1.65 times ST, where ST is a standard deviation. As we said before, Rn is a value to be used. In other words, the model value or nominal value, Rm is a mean value and ST is a standard deviation. The strength calculations are done for the following modes of failure. Please note that not all may be applicable in any given case. There are six modes in tension and three in shear. The tension modes of failure are A, a still failure of anchor in tension, B, Concrete breakout failure of anchor. Notice that the conical shape is separated from concrete. C. Concrete side face blowout failure of headed anchor. D. Splitting failure. E. Pullout failure in casting post installed expansion or undercut anchors. And finally, F, bound failure of adhesive anchor. And here are shear modes of failure. G, still failure of anchor in shear. H, concrete breakout failure of anchor in shear. And finally, I, concrete pryout failure of anchor in shear. How is the strength computed? Depending on the mode of failure, in computing the strength corresponding to individual modes of failure, three scenarios are possible. The strength is the smallest value of the three values corresponding to the three. The strength of a single anchor. The strength of a single anchor in a group. In this situation, the strength parameters are affected because of the group effect and the strength of the group altogether. Please note that not all three scenarios are present for any mode, and only a few modes have two of these. 
the groove effect is usually prevalent when anchors are too close to one another or to the edge, and these conditions are more common in column base plate anchors. This table summarizes the six modes of failure in tension and corresponding equations for design. The pertinent references to ACI sections are also given. For example, for the steel element failure, the pertinent ACI section is 17.41. And the design equations corresponding three scenarios are listed. You notice that for single anchor, phi NSA has to be larger than NUA. Anything with the phi is the factor resistance. That's to the left of the inequality. Anything with the U is a factor of applied load, and that's to the right of the inequality. The second condition, phi NSA larger or equal to NUAI, and NUAI represents the factor fault a factored load rather in an anchor in the group and you notice that the third scenarios in the group for the group condition is not applicable in this case also the pertinent figure is shown for your reference going down the list you notice that similar equations provided for other modes of failure and corresponding references given to the ACI section for the splitting mode of failure, notice that it says it's likely to occur in a deep embedment situations at close edge distances. No strength equations are needed to be satisfied in this case. However, we must make sure that the anchor satisfy the spacing and edge distance requirements. In Table 1, we had a series of parameters listed. Anything, again, with a subscript U represents the factor of applied load. NUA is a factor of applied tensile force on a single anchor. NUA with a I is a factor of applied tensile force on an individual anchor in a group of anchors. And anything with a G, such as NUAG, is a factor of applied tensile force on a group of anchors together. And the parameters with the phi are all factored resistances. Phi NSA is a factor tensile steel strength in tension for a single anchor. Phi NSP is a factor concrete side face blowout strength in tension for a single anchor. And again, with the G, such as phi NSPG, is a factor concrete side face blowout strength in tension for a group of anchors. Phi NCB is a factor of concrete breakout of strength in tension for a single anchor. Phi NCBG, again, is a factor of concrete breakout of strength in tension for a group of anchors. Phi NPN, factor of concrete pullout of strength in tension for a single anchor. And again, Phi NA is a factor of bound of strength of a single adhesive anchor in tension. And anytime we put a G, we are talking about the group. So phi NAG is a factor bound the strength of a group of adhesive anchors in tension. The resistance reduction factor phi is explained later. It depends on the type of anchor and, of course, the type of mode of failure. This table summarizes anchor shear failure modes and corresponding ACI sections. Again, references to ACI sections are given, plus the illustration that we had before for a reference. For example, for a steel element failure, the pertinent ACI section is 17.51. Notice that out of the three conditions, the single anchor applies phi VSA has to be larger than VUA. Again, phi VSA is the factor of resistance. VUA is the factor of applied shear. Notice that the individual anchor in a group 
phi VSPG has to be larger than VUAG. However, a single angle in a group, we don't have to consider that. That does not apply in this case. Similar uh, equations and situations are provided for the other two modes of failure. And the corresponding illustrations. Again, in table two, anything with a subscript U is a factor that applied load. So VUA is a factor that applied shear on a single anchor. VUAI, factor that applied shear on an individual anchor in a group. VUAG is a factor that applied shear on a group of anchors. Phi VSA, factor that is still a strength in shear for a single anchor. Phi VCB, factored concrete breakout is strength in shear for a single anchor. With the G again, Phi VCBG, factored concrete breakout is strength in shear for a group of anchors. Phi CP, factored concrete pry out is strength in shear for a single anchor. And finally, Phi VCPG, factored concrete pry out is strength in shear for a group of anchors. Now, talking about the resistance reduction factor phi. This table summarizes the value of phi for different conditions or situations. Notice that we have highlighted a few of those in red. Those are the most common ones. For example, for anchors governed by a strength of a ductile steel element, and that is usually the case, 0 0.75 is used for tension, 0 0.65 for shear. However, when we have a brittle type of a steel element, you notice that the values of the resistance reduction factor have gone down. Pay attention to also the anchors governed by concrete breakout, side face blowout, pullout, or pry out strength. Notice that two conditions are listed, condition A and condition B. We have highlighted condition B. What are these two conditions? If you look at a little bit lower in the table, these conditions are specified. In a nutshell, condition A is when we have supplementary reinforcements in concrete around the anchor, and condition B when we have no supplementary reinforcement. And of course, that is usually the case. Going down in the table, we talk about Ponce-Stall anchors, and three categories are specified. For each category, we again have two conditions, A and B. So there are six possible values for the resistance reduction factor, smallest of which is 0 0.45. Now, what are these categories? These are explained at the bottom of this page. Category 1 talks about low sensitivity to installation and high reliability. Category 2, medium sensitivity to installation and medium reliability. And Category 3, high sensitivity to installation and lower reliability. Now, these levels of reliability and sensitivity will need to be determined by test. The good news is that because we often use commercially available anchors, these values are specified in the manufacturer's documents and for design. So as long as we pick up the, uh, the anchor that we want in terms of the length, material type, and, um, and diameter, we know for sure what the values of phi to be used because those would be listed in the manufacturer's uh, materials, design uh, materials. Provisions for anchors subject to seismic loading. For anchors in seismic design category C, D, E, and F, additional design requirements will need to be satisfied as outlined in sections 17.2.3.2 through 17.2.3.7 of ACI 2014. In cases where post-installed anchors are used, these are the ones that require drilling into concrete and installing them. The ACI prescribed pre-qualification of anchors to resist earthquake loads per ACI 355.2 and 355.4 will also need to be met. 
For anchors in tension, seismic design requirements for anchors are primarily intended to assure the ductility demand, as highlighted in red. In essence, this requirement calls for a design in which the concrete governed strength for a single anchor is greater than the steel strength of the anchor. This is to assure yielding of the steel before concrete crushes. For a group of anchors, the ratio of the tensile load on the most highly stressed anchor to the steel strength of that anchor shall be equal to or greater than the ratio of the tensile load on tension loaded anchors to the concrete governed strength of the anchor group. In essence, we are saying that we don't want to have an anchor that has a much stronger resistance to the group. The main thrust of the ductility requirement is that the design is governed by yielding of the ductile steel element of the anchor. As indicated in ACI 2014, if the anchor cannot meet the specified ductility requirements, then the attachment should be either designed to yield in the case of a structure or light gauge steel or designed to crush in the case the attachment is a wood member. In cases where the ductility requirement is satisfied, then any attachments to the anchor should be designed not to yield. In designing attachments using yield mechanisms to provide the ductility needed, the ratio of a specified yield strength to the expected strength for the material of the attachment should be considered in determining the design force. The value used for the expected strength should consider both material overstrength and strain hardening effects. ACI 2014 indicates that for attachment made up of steel, if the specified yield strength is the only material information available, the expected strength is recommended to be taken as approximately 1.5 times the specified yield strength. However, if the actual yield strength of the seal is known, the expected strength is recommended to be taken as approximately 1.25 times the actual yield strength. It is also noted that under seismic conditions and as a safe design situation, the full shear force should be assumed in any direction. We need to do some modification for the tension strength, and this table summarizes the anchor tensile design strength for seismic resistance. As you can see, for example, for a steel strength in tension, phi NSA is used for a single anchor or for the most highly stressed individual anchor in a group of anchors. That means we don't have any modification for this condition. However, when you take a look at, uh, for example, concrete breakout strength in tension, you notice that certain reduction is specified. For example, 0 0.75 phi NCB or 0 0.75 phi NCBG are used. And these are if anchor reinforcement at both sides of the breakout surface is developed. NCB or NCBG need not be computed and the design strength of the anchor requirement is used instead of the concrete breakout strength. So there are some requirements in here to consider. And going down the list, there are certainly similar requirements for other conditions. This table summarizes in a nutshell the seismic requirements. For example, if you look at the four options provided, you look at option A, it says for single anchors, concrete governed strength has to be larger than the steel strength of the anchor. Pretty much going over what we discussed before. Of course, uh, we are not going to go over these uh, line by line. Uh, the intention is to give you the pertinent references in the ACI and in a spare time, you can go over those uh, sections in ACI and get familiar with the requirements for seismic design.
And uh, continuing the discussion, uh, this table summarizes the anchor shear design requirements for seismic effects. Again, four conditions are specified. Again, the intention is not to go through these line by line, just to uh, make a reference to pertinent uh, section in the ACI, and also in a summary provide what is the essence of the seismic requirement for shear. Again, in your spare time, please pay attention to the ACI section specified and review those to understand whether those conditions apply to the case that you are investigating. Some additional notes regarding seismic design. There are also additional requirements for seismic design outlined in ACI 2014, including those related to using lightweight concrete. Provisions for adhesive anchors and cases where lightweight concrete is used requires that a reduction factor for a strength be applied. The reduction factor for a strength computations uh, is uh, recommended for lightweight concrete at 0 0.8 for expansion and adhesive anchor concrete failure mode and 0 0.6 for adhesive anchor bond failure intention. For cast-in and undercut anchor concrete failure modes, no reduction is considered for lightweight concrete. Interaction of tension and shear forces. In most applications, anchors or groups of anchors are subject to both tension and shear forces. ACI 2014 requires that the interaction of the tension and shear forces be considered in design of anchors in cases where the ratio of the applied factored shear load to the factored resistance is larger than 0 0.2 and the ratio of the factored applied tension to the factored resistance is larger than 0 0.2. And in these equations, phi Vn and phi Nn are obtained using the ACI 2014 procedures following the modes of failures and the strength requirements that we summarize in tables 1, 2, and 4. The question is what if only one of the above two factors is larger than 0 0.2? In that case, the interaction is still is considered. However, let's say if VUA over 5 VN is less than 0 0.2, then we use the full strength intention in our interaction equations. That means that NN is taken larger than NUA without considering any resistance reduction factor. And similarly, if NUA over phi NN is smaller than 0 0.2, the full strength in shear can be used. In other words, VN is larger than VUA. No phi factor is used. The interaction is considered using one of two equations. It is a linear equation and a nonlinear equation. If we use a linear equation, NUA divided by phi NN plus VUA divided by phi VN needs to be smaller than 1.2 for a satisfactory design. For a nonlinear combination, a power of 5 over 3 is used. However, the combination needs to be smaller than 1 for the design to be satisfactory. We need to check one of the two. Please note that the ratios NUA over phi NN and VUA over phi VN are referred to as the strength utilization ratios. And we refer to these ratios as such in the upcoming slides. Let's look at an example. The accompanying figure shows the details of a shelf angle is an angle 6 by 6 by 3 quarters of an inch. This shelf angle is attached to a spandrel beam, reinforced concrete spandrel beam of a width 10 inches. As you can see in the figure, the left shows the longitudinal detail of the attachment, a space in between anchors 2 feet, edge distances from all directions 8 inches. The figure to the right shows a cross-section. 
The angle supports a wall of 14 feet with a nominal wall thickness of 4 inches. As we said, anchors are used at S equal to 2 feet with the edge distance of 8 inches from all directions. The anchor we have selected is an ASTM F1554 grade 36 with 0 0.5 inches in diameter. The ultimate capacity, tensile capacity of this anchor is 58,000 psi, yield capacity 105,000 psi. The effective cross-sectional area is 0.142 square inches and the gross area is 0.291 square inches. If prime sub C of 4000 psi is used and the load eccentricity is 4.06 inches. Furthermore, the structure is in a non seismic area. So we want to check whether the designated anger is acceptable. Let's do the calculation of the load. The self weight of the angle is 19.6 pounds per linear foot. We do the calculations of the weight for a length equal to the anchor spacing S. Therefore, the total load W is 14 feet the height of the wall multiplied by the 2 feet which is S and multiplied by 42 pounds per square foot. That's the density of the wall plus one half of the weight of the angle over the two feet uh, length is considered. The answer is 1,195.6. This would be for the computation of tension in the anchor. We can use the same value for shear computation, but the more accurate value is when we consider the entire weight of the angle. And in that case, the W would be 1,215.2 pounds. Again, notice that in these calculations, we are using 42 pounds per square foot for the wall weight and one half of the self weight of the angle for the anchor tension and the entire self weight of the angle for the anchor shear force computation. Now let's compute tension and shear forces in the anchor. The free body diagram is shown again. The lever arm between tension in the anchor and compression force of concrete is 3 inches minus one half of the thickness of the angle. Therefore, the lever arm is 2.625. And uh, therefore, the anchor tension using the approximate yet conservative value is a moment, which is the load multiplied by E divided by the lever arm, and we get 1,849.3 pounds. Now, here we got this value from the AIAC. The three inch value that you see in here is from AIAC and it is listed for different size angles. Uh, for this angle, which is six by six, the value of the uh, Y is three inches minus one half of the thickness. And for the shear force, uh, we simply use the value we had before, that is the direct force transmitted to the anchor as a shear force. Because the dead load is the only load present, the load factor is 1.4. So now we get the factor that apply tension, NUA as 2,589 pounds, and a factored shear as 1,701.3 pounds. A strength computation for tension. We need to consider all possible modes of failure, starting with the steel tension. You see the illustration there. The equation by ACI is NSA equal to ASEN times FUTA. NSA is a steel strength in tension, and FUTA is bounded by the minimum of 1.9 FYA or 125,000 psi, whichever is smaller. Our value is 58,000 psi, as we mentioned before, which is certainly smaller than 
those two limits. Therefore, the value to be used in our equation is 58,000 PSI. And uh, plugging those into the equation and including ASEN, we come up with NSA as 8,236 pounds. But of course, we have to multiply this by the resistance reduction factor. This is a ductile system. 0 0.75 is the capacity or resistance reduction factor. So, so we get the resistance as 6,177 pounds. And the strength utilization ratio is the factor load, which was 2,589, divided by this strength value, we get 0 0.419. Continuing with the problem, the concrete breakout is strength in tension. And again, the figure is shown there. We need to determine whether anchor groups should be considered for concrete breakout of strength in tension, critical spacing three times HEF, which is 12 inches, because our embedment length is four inches, if you remember. And since the spacing is 24 inches and is larger than this value, Therefore, the anchor group effect is not critical, and the anchor strength calculations will need to be done for a single anchor only. The strength is from the equation which is given, so NCB equal to ANC divided by ANC0, and three correction factor multiplied by NB. Computation of ANC and ANC0 depend on the edge distances, and let's examine those. ANC is a projected concrete failure area for a single anchor group of anchors. For a single anchor, this is approximated as the base of the rectilinear geometrical figure that results from projecting the failure surface outward 1.5 HEF from the certain line of the anchor as shown. So we go out for 1.5 HEF in the y direction and in the x direction. And this is, by the way, the largest possible area that we can find. As you can see at the bottom of that figure, it says A and C equal to A and C0. So what is A and C0? A and C0 is actually the largest possible value we can get for A and C, which is pretty much what you see. You notice that the conical shape is separated with that designation angle 35 degrees. So what are other possible values of A and C? Let's examine those. In general, depending upon whether the edge distances CA1 and CA2 are smaller than 1.5 HEF, five different situations are possible for the computation of the area A and C. The edge distances CA1 and CA2 are measured in the X and Y directions respectively. So these are the five conditions. Again, in your spare time, you can explore those, but you notice that. Let's look at the case B that we just examined. The case B is the one for which A and C is equal to A and C0. That actually applies to our case, as we see before as we'll see, as we saw before, and we'll see it later. Uh, now let's look at case A. This is where the CA1 edge distance covers in the X direction, and you notice that in that case, our rectangular area is a smaller. Case C, in the Y direction, you notice that the edge distances are smaller and ends up with a smaller rectangular area. And other possible cases are D and E. For each of these cases, the equation for A and C is provided right below. More detailed information is found in the ACI manual 2014. So in general, A and C is smaller than A and C0. The limit is equal to it for a single anchors, and A and C is smaller than N A and C0 for anchor group, in which N is the number of anchors in the group. Again, in our example, because the edge distances are larger than one and a half times HEF, therefore A and C is equal to A and C0, which is 144 square inches. 
Now we can plug those in the equation for NB, and the equation for NB is given there. The equation number uh, in the ACI is 17.4.2a. It is equal to a factor Kc, another factor lambda a times the square root of prime sub c hef to the power of one and a half. Now, what is k sub c? k sub c is equal to 24 for cast in anchors, like in our case. Lambda a depends on the type of concrete, is equal to one for normal weight concrete. As a side note, the NB equation is limited by 16 lambda a square root of prime sub c HEF to the power of 5 over 3 if HEF is bounded by 25 and 11 inches. And again, remember that in our case, HEF is equal to 4 inches. Therefore, the upper equation we just gave you governs and we get NB equal to 12,140. Uh, 43 pounds. Of course, we have a series of modification factors, as we said before. These modification factors are explained here. The first one is Psi ECN is a modification factor for anchor group loaded eccentrically in tension. The factor is 1 divided by 1 plus 2e prime n divided by 3hef, where e prime n is a group anchor load eccentricity. And the group effect is not important in our case, therefore this factor is equal to 1. The second factor is a modification for edge effect, psi edn is equal to 1 if C A minimum is larger than 1.5 HEF, otherwise is the equation given there. And in our example, C A minimum is 8 inches, is certainly larger than 1.5 HEF, therefore this correction factor is also equal to 1. The third one is a Psi CN is a modification factor for non-cracking in the service load. Now, our case, assume concrete is cracked. Therefore, this factor is also equal to 1. The other one is Psi CPN is a modification factor for post-installed anchors. In this example, anchors are cast in. They are not post-installed, therefore that factor is also equal to 1. As a side note, there are some additional information about this factor and also the equation for it in case we get into other situations, which pretty much depends on the CAC, which is a critical edge distance. Please consider this additional information as a side note for other cases. We encourage you to review section 17.76 of ACI in case you are talking about post-install anchors. Now considering all those modification factors, we come up with NCB as 12,143 pounds. And since no supplemental reinforcement is used, condition B, as specified in our table, would govern. Therefore, the resistance reduction factor is equal to 0 0.7, and the factored resistance is therefore 8,501 pounds. So let's compute the strength utilization ratio and in this case is 0 0.305. We summarize all these uh, utilization ratios later. All right, let's look at pull out the strength in tension. Again, the figure is shown there. The equation is NPN equal to Psi CPNP. The equation number in ACI is given. Psi CP is one for cracked concrete which is the situation in our example, and is 1.4 if analysis shows concrete is non-cracked. Furthermore, NP is limited by 8 ABRGF prime sub C 
for single headed stud or headed bolt anchors. Therefore, uh, computing that limit, we get 9,312 pounds and NPN using the factor for crack concrete is equal to 9,312. Using the resistance reduction factor of 0 0.7, we get the factored resistance as 6,518.4. And the corresponding strength utilization ratio is 0 0.397. Side face blowout strength intention. In this example, our HEF is 4 according to the code, is compared with 2.5 CA1. The 2.5 CA1, remember CA1 is equal to 8 inches, so HEF is smaller than that. Therefore, the side face blowout mode of failure is not prevalent. That means our anchor is not too close to the edge. We go to the bound strength intention. This mode of failure pertains to adhesive anchors and as such is not prevalent in this example. So let's do the calculations for shear. The steel element shear strength for casting headed stud anchor, the equation is ASEV times FUTA. There is another limit that's 0.6 ASEV FUTA for casting headed bolt and hooked bolt anchors and post install anchors where the sleeves do not extend through shear planes. Please note that if the sleeves extend through shear planes, VSA will not be determined by test. Uh, I'm sorry, will need to be determined by test. And two, if anchors are used with built in grout pads, the nominal strength VSA shall be multiplied by a factor of 0 0.8 per ACI, uh, the equation 17.512A and B. In these uh, equations, by the way, ASEV is the effective cross-sectional area of anchoring shear, and FUTA is again the minimum of 1.9 FYA and 125,000 PSI, which are very smaller. In our example, the anchor is a bolt anchor with ASEV is 0.142 square inches and FUTA is 58,000 PSI. Therefore, VSA is 0.6 times the area times 58,000, which is 49, 41.6, 4,941.6 pounds. And with the resistance reduction factor of 0.65, we get the uh, factored strength for shear as 3,212. This is direct shear on a steel. So let's get the strength utilization ratio. The applied factored shear is 1,701.3. Dividing it by this strength, we get 0 0.529. Concrete breakout in shear. Illustration is shown again. The concrete breakout strength in shear for a single anchor for shear force perpendicular to the edge is the equation which is given there. VCB is equal to AVC over AVC0 and a series of correction factors multiplied by VB. If shear is parallel to the edge, VCB from the above equation is multiplied by 2. In our case, shear is perpendicular to the edge and psi EDV is equal to 1. So we can use the above equation in which V sub B is the basic concrete breakout strength is shear for a single anchor. For cracked concrete, it is the smaller of the two values that you see in there. Those parameters in the equations pretty much were explained before. However, we have some of those may be new. For example, DA is the diameter of the anchor and so on. So we can go over those parameters. LE is a load bearing length of the anchor for shear. It is equal to HEF for anchors with a constant stiffness over the full length, such as headed stud anchors or post-install anchors 
with one tubular shell over the full length of the embedment length. And LE would be equal to two times diameter DA for torque controlled expansion sleeves with a, dis with a distance sleeve separated from expansion sleeve. And LE is smaller than eight uh, times diameter bar in all cases. For casting headed slots, such as the one in our case, and headed bolts or hooked bolts that are continuously welded to a steel attachment having a minimum thickness larger than 3 8 7 inch and uh, DA divided by 2, VB is the smaller of the two values listed. These are provided that A for a group of anchors, the strength is determined for a row farthest from the edge. B, anchor spacing S is not less than 2.5 inches. And C, reinforcement is provided at the corners if the edge distance is smaller than 1.5 HEF. Now let's look at AVC. AVC is a projected area of a failure surface on the side of the concrete member at its edge. It can be taken as the area of the base of a truncated half pyramid projected on the side face of the member where the top of the half pyramid is given by the axis of the anchor row selected as critical. Now, it sounds a little bit complicated. But uh, once uh, we show you some illustration, you notice that it is not that complicated. The value of CA1, remember the edge distance, shall be taken as a distance from edge to the axis. Note that AVC is smaller than AVC0 when N is a number of anchors in the group, if the group effect is important, of course. So let's just put that in a figure. A, V, C, 0, that's the second parameter, is projected area of a single anchor in a deep member with a distance from edge larger or equal to 1.5 CA1. Remember, CA1 is the edge distance in the X direction. In the direction perpendicular to the shear force, A, V, C, 0 can be evaluated based on a half pyramid with a side length parallel to the edge of 3 times CA1 and a depth of 1.5 CA1. Note that the deep member is considered when the thickness HA is larger than 1.5 times CA1. So this figure pretty much illustrates what would be the AVC, what would be AVC0. You notice that in our case, we get a truncated uh, half pyramid uh, projection. The rectangular area you see in red is the AVC0, which is the largest possible value we can get for AVC. Because of the CA2 equal to 8 inches, you notice that in our case, we get the blue area as AVC. So that's pretty much it in terms of computing uh, the two areas. And by the way, HA that we specified in there is equal to 10 inches. That's the width of our structural member. So if you take a look at the geometry provided, actually AVC0 is really 4.5 times CA1 to the power of 2. And we mentioned that, please note that in our case, HA is equal to 10 inches. And therefore, it's smaller than 1.5 times CA1. That is why we end up with uh, the blue area as opposed to the red area. So for AVC, we use the following. Since the CA2, the edge distance in the y direction is 8 inches and is smaller than 1.5 times CA1, the base of the pyramid extends CA2 on each side of the anchor axis. This means the base of the pyramid has a dimension equal to 2 CA2 as we showed before. Also, note that the minimum of HA equal 10 inches and 1.5 CA equal to 12 inches is used as a pyramid base dimension along the side of the concrete spandrel B. 
Having said all of those, we finally end up with AVC equal to 160 square inches and AVC 0 is 288. Our LE in this case is the same as the embedment length of the anchor, which is 4. And therefore, because it is less than 8 times the diameter of the bar, and we use the equation V sub B as explained before. It's Plugging the numbers in that equation, we come up with VB equal to 10,736.6. And we had a second limit to worry about, the second VB, and that's 12,879.6. The two equations we gave you before. Remember that lambda A is for normal weight concrete is equal to 1. So using the smaller one, and now we can compute VCB by applying those correction factors. So we had a whole bunch of correction factors, if you remember. Since CA2, again, CA2 is the edge distance in the y direction, is smaller than 12, then we need to compute one of those correction factors, psi EDV, from the equation that is given. 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 CA2 divided by 1.5 CA1, and that's 0 0.9. Because the concrete is not correct, uh, I'm sorry, because the concrete is correct, Psi CV is equal to 1. Then we have a Psi HV based on the equation square root of 1.5 CA1 divided by HA, depending upon if HA is smaller than 1.5 CA1 or not. And in this case, yes, it is smaller than 1.5 CA1 over HA is 10 inches. So that correction factor is 1.1. Finally, plugging those correction factors in the equation and also putting those areas that we computed, we ended up with a VCB equal to 5,905.1 pounds. Now we apply the resistance reduction factor of 0 0.7 and we get the factor resistance as 4,133. 133.6 pounds. A strength utilization factor in this case is 0 0.412. You notice that the calculations in this case were a little bit overwhelming, especially computing those areas. The good news is that the third one, concrete prior to strength calculation, is a straightforward and simple. For a single anchor, the equation is VCP equal to KCP and CP. Remember, NCP is the tensile strength. We had done that calculation before. So uh, for casting expansion and undercut anchors, remember the value from previous calculation was 12,143 pounds. Case of CB is a factor which in this case is equal to 1 if HEF is smaller than two and a half inches and is equal to two if HEF larger than two and a half inches. So of course, we have four inches in this case for the embedment length. So KCP is equal to two. And uh, plugging the numbers in VCP, we get 24,286. And uh, multiplying that by a uh, resistance reduction factor of 0 0.7, we get 17,002 uh, pounds and over the strength utilization factor, in this case, is 0 0.1. So, let's summarize everything in a table. Modes of failure, strength utilization. We got the steel tension. Utilization was 0 0.419, and this is the maximum out of all those cases we considered for tension mode of failure. For a steel shear, the strength utilization was 0 0.529. That's, again, maximum among the three that we did for shear. So we pick up the maximum in tension, the maximum in shear, plug them in the equation in the interaction, as you see at the bottom of uh, this slide. Well, you don't have to use both interaction equations. We did it in this case for illustration, but just one is enough. If you use a linear equation, the summation of the two values gives, gives us a 0 0.938, which is less than 1.2. Therefore, our design is OK. And if you use the nonlinear combination for interaction, 
still the value is okay so our anchors as selected satisfy the design anchor design in concrete requires proper consideration of the pertinent tension and shear modes of failure in situation when seismic forces are present the design will involve considerations for ductility requirements when anchors are close to each other the group effect is also important and will influence the design. Thank you for watching this video.